as shown in video number 125, DCC-X version 5 can not only do DCC, but it can support DC districts as well. In this video, I am going to have a closer look at this feature, discuss potential hurdles of setting it up, and finally run a Gantt answer over a test track with four DC districts. Hello everyone and welcome to the ILTT channel. I am Hans Tanner. A special welcome to all first-time visitors and welcome back to everyone else. I am happy you made it here and thank you for your support of my channel. And if you are not yet a subscriber, please click the subscribe button below and hit the bell icon so that you are always in a premium seat when new videos come out. For doing this test, I built a simple DCC command station based on the Arduino Mega. If you want to use the DC district feature, the Arduino Mega is the board of choice, as the Arduino Uno is not capable to support DC outputs. On top of the Mega, I stack four power shield boards each of them capable to deliver up to 8 amps of drag power and configured for the pin settings shown in this table. I use jumpers for the configuration, but solder bridges would do as well. On top of the stack, I place a DCC aux shield with IOTT stick, which provides a simple configuration screen, Wi-Fi connection and a wire throttle server. Note that I use the IOTT cube frames to support the boards. Not only do they make the command station look nicer, but they also ensure that the individual boards are in the right distance and parallel to each other, which helps to maintain a proper electrical contact between the boards. I then connect the power input blocks of the boards to my LED power supply. For this test build, I daisy chain them as I am only going to draw very little current. For a real layout, I certainly would use an individual power supply for each power shield. The power shield outputs are connected to each district of the test layout, and for the Arduino, I use a 12 volt power supply connected to the DCC aux shield. As shown in video number 130, the DCC aux shield provides a safe 5 volt supply to the Arduino and the other boards in the stack. Then I use the Arduino IDE to load the DCCX software. Check the DCCX webpage for details how to download the DCCX software and do a manual install on the Arduino Mega. Before I upload it, I configure the motor driver settings to use the pin numbers I configured the boards for. Then I compile the sketch and upload it to the Arduino Mega using the USB connection. And don't forget to disconnect USB when done, as the IoTT stick uses this port to communicate with the Mega board. As soon as I connect the power to the aux shield, the stack comes to life. The Arduino and the IoTT stick power up. I set the IoTT stick to use the Loconet loopback as command source and the red hat shield as hat device. After save and restart, this brings up the red hat configuration tab where I can conveniently set the output mode of each track section. I set all four of them to DC and assign the DCC addresses 10, 12, 14 and 16. These are the addresses I will use on the smartphone app to control each district. I can now connect with wire throttle or engine driver and select one of these addresses to the throttle. When increasing the speed, the LED on the board becomes brighter, either green or red depending on the direction. When changing the direction, the color changes. I can repeat this test for the other channels to make sure that each output can be controlled from the smartphone app as intended. This is a good moment to hook up an oscilloscope to one of the track outputs and see what kind of DC current is sent to the track. As we see here at speed zero, both tracks are at the same voltage. When I increase the speed, I start to see brief pulses that become wider as I keep working the throttle. This is called a PWM or pulse width modulated signal. It is a series of brief pulses always at full track voltage, 
So it is not classic analog DC where the voltage is increased. The voltage is always full track voltage, but the pulse width changes. For the motor though, this kind of looks like a changing voltage and the longer the pulse, the faster it rotates. When I change the travel direction at speed zero, both track signals go to the opposite polarity, but since both are the same, the motor sees no voltage. When I increase the speed, I see the pulses appear again, but this time in the other direction. This change in polarity makes the loco move in the other direction as well, and the LED on the power shield changes from red to green or vice versa. Interesting to note the frequency of the PWM pulses. On the Mega I'm using here, one channel is using 490 Hz, the other three channels are set to 125 Hz. This frequency can be configured in the DCCX software, but this appears to be the default setting. Generally, a higher frequency leads to less humming of the motor when running at very low speeds, but I have not looked yet into where and how to change it. And this signal form also explains why current measurement is not that easy. For my test, I set the DCCX drip current to 3 amps as you have seen in the motor driver configuration. DCCX measures the momentary current to determine a short circuit situation. If you use a multimeter, on the other hand, it gives you something related to the average current over the entire PWM period. So if the speed setting is very low, the trip current may be achieved and the short circuit detection triggers, but on the multimeter display you only see like one tenth of the defined trip current. There are other factors playing into this, but just don't be surprised if the command station sees a short circuit at very low speeds and at the same time you get a low current reading on a multimeter. It is because DCCX saw one short current spike higher than the set trip current. The test layout I use is a simple track oval with four sections or districts that are isolated from each other using some plastic rail ties on both rails. This is important when using DC districts as we want to be able to change the travel direction and hence the track polarity in each district separately. For my initial test, I use my little Buckman Gandy Dancer, as everybody can see, this vehicle is way too small for installing a decoder, so running it on DC is the only option. It appears to run as it should. I can control the speed from the smartphone app and change direction in each section using the assigned DCC address. As you see, I have configured engine driver to use four sliders so that each slider is controlling one DC district. Now, you probably remember from the pre dcc days that when crossing districts on an analog layout, you have to make sure that direction and speed of the district you are entering matches those of the district you are leaving. So, for my test I wonder what happens if this is not the case. I first set the districts to different directions. As soon as the Gandhi Dancer crosses the gap, it generates a short circuit as the polarity is different and it sits right onto the gap, maintaining the short circuit. If I look at the output of the command station, I see the LEDs of one of the two involved sections going dark, meaning that the short circuit protection kicks in and shuts down the track power for one of the two shortened districts. 
So the DCC X command station takes care of the situation. But of course, the need for adjusting the travel direction is exactly the same as it used to be on traditional DC layouts. What about different speed settings? For the test, I set two districts to about 40, the other two to about 80. As we can see, the Gandhi dancer has no problems to transfer from one district to the next and just adjusts the speed to the new settings and the speed difference does not matter. This looks very good and it would be the perfect moment to finish off this video. But unfortunately, that's not the end of the story. When I put on a longer locomotive that covers the gap between two districts with a more secure contact, I started to see short circuits when crossing the gap. The reason is very technical, so I try to be short. When the H bridge on the power shield is off, it basically shorts out the two rails to allow any current from the rotating motor to pass. This is basically a protection function of the chip. Now, when the gap between two districts is closed and the timing between the two signals is slightly different, one power shield is feeding current into the other power shield, which might be in short circuit mode at that very moment, which causes one of the power shields to shut down. As it turns out, this was not a problem with the two axle Gandhi dancer. Most likely when crossing the gap, only two or three wheels had good contact to the rail and the short circuit in that case did not really develop. Of course I had considered that problem when designing the power shield and the simple solution is to switch the brake and power signals. In that case the H bridge is turned to high resistance if the PWM signal is paused and a second signal coming in from the adjacent district via the wheels of the locomotive does not cause any harm. So I reconfigured the power shields in Arduino, basically swapping the pin definitions for power and brake. And as expected, it worked. No more short circuit when a long locomotive is crossing the gap. There was another problem though. The logic levels of the DCCX output are inverted compared to what the power shield needs. As a result, the drag power is on when it is supposed to be off, and the locomotives go full speed if the throttle is set to zero and come to a halt at full throttle. That is really useless, but fortunately, the developers of DCCX have provided a simple way to change the logic levels of the output pins. All we need to do is adding a minus sign in front of the pin and it will work with inverse logic. So I changed the pin configuration to this final setup and uploaded it to DCCX. And that did the trick. All four districts are now working in a mode that the resistance between the rails is high if the PWM signal is off, therefore providing for a very free transition of the locomotives from one district to the other, even if the speed settings are quite different. The polarity of course has to match, or the locomotive will be stuck in the middle, causing a short circuit to one of the districts. The configuration of the power shields thereby is super easy. Just add some soldering bridges or jumpers to the pins you want to configure and make sure you have the corresponding pin settings in the motor driver setup file of DCCX. And if you want, you can add up to 8 power shields to the same Arduino stack, each capable to supply 5 or even 8 amps of drag power, assuming your power supply can handle that current load. Also keep in mind that you can supply DCC tracks and DC districts from the same command station. You can have, say, two power shields for your DCC tracks and four more for DC districts as demonstrated in this video. And that's it for today. I hope this information was useful or at least interesting for you and I was able to explain how you can make the DC district feature of DCCX5 work for your DC layout. 
If so, please click the like button below to let me know. It only takes a second to do so, but it helps a long way to support the IOTT channel in general and to promote this video to other model railroaders because YouTube likes the likes. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.